moving on from, um, from med, we're going to digital therapeutics and uh, digital medical device working in the field of chronic pain. So why is chronic pain interesting? Well, first, if you look at the big picture, chronic pain is a problem that a lot of individuals uh, face. Almost 25% of the population suffers from chronic pain in some way. And this obviously puts a lot of pressure on society. We have a fortunate here that people don't die from it as often, but we have a lot of cost on society since, since you can't work and can't work, uh, act in the way that you did previously. So, for painters' perspective, we have a complete solution for this that physicians can work with, with their pain patient, to alleviate their pain and get better treatment plans. It basically builds up on two different functions. There is an app, which is the digital medical device for the patient, which guides them on a daily level on how to alleviate pain due to an artificial neural network that I will come back to. Then in addition, there is a care platform for a physician where they can, where they can set up different types of treatment goals. It can be everything from how to reduce medication over time, how to look at different types of activities, setting certain goals. This is something that we have seen in, uh, in uh, different academic studies, that the acceptance commitment therapy or cognitive behavioral therapy are two things that are really important to work with with pain patients rather than bringing them opiates. So that's the structure of it. And obviously there are a lot of companies within the digital space, but no one has an active coach in the product itself. So we had a patented solution which drive a pa patient-centric view of activities that a patient conduct and how they can alleviate pain. So basically, when a, pa a patient interacts with a device, we start to calculate and analyze, and then each day we provide them with insights and we provide them with guidance on things that they shouldn't do and things that they should do more of. And we do this when, uh, in order to try to increase their activity engagement as much as possible, but still keep the pain at the constant level or or lowered. But the main thing here is to, is to get them more active. We have conducted a several, uh, several trials, the latest being a multi-center study with uh, Will Cornell and Newton Wellesley Hospital. And we can see over here that just over a 12-week period of time where we provided this product to patients, we saw a decrease in pain interference among 73.8% of the subject. And also in the secondary outcomes, where we looked at everything from physical function, their general activity level, their ability to actually work again, was really, really high. In addition to that, we took patients that had a self-reported high rate of depression or anxiety and evaluated them separately. And also here we saw really good results that, that those, um, those measures were lowered during a period of time. But when you are working in a field where a lot of companies are working, how do you act in order to stand out? Well, there are five different things that we are quite unique with. The first is that we, our device is in fact FDA registered, which means that we are eligible to sell and we're also eligible to get reimbursement through the US healthcare system. The next is that we put great emphasis on the back end, meaning that the, everything from ORCA certification to HIPAA compliance to secure that each healthcare provider gets the best standard of care in form of, from a technical perspective. We also see that when we look at digital device in general, they normally talk about other people's study or general study of digital device. We have our own study. And then also this platform is patented. And even though chronic pain is what I will talk about today, this is just one of many verticals. We are looking into the migraine space. We're also looking into more of a wellness space just to see how we can broaden this infrastructure of using a neural network to alleviate pain or alleviate migraine in other instances. We are right now going commercial, and there is a good thing about going commercial in the United States, which is our core market, and that is the fact that their system accept digital device in a very good way. They are reimbursable and they are part of the healthcare system in order to get patients out of ER and out of clinics and in order to have them evaluate their treatment outside or outpatient service. So therefore, when we look at our business model, we charge for each and every patient that is onboarded. Then in the next step, the physician can also bill for that patient that is onboarding using product. So there is basically a win-win situation here where both we and our provider 
get paid for this device as well as a patient getting, getting value. And I've been asked why we as a Swedish company look at the US as our first market. Well, the first is that it's a large market and there is a lot of individuals that suffer from chronic pain. So we can see that we have 90 million of the US population, which is above average on an international level. Uh, we can also see that there is, even though it's quite few, there's still a fair amount of people that actually meet pain physicians, which is our core target as of now. So almost 5 million individuals in the United States meet the pain physician each year. But the core thing why we look at this market is that from these figures, 3 million individuals of these 19 suffer from opiate use disorders. And 50,000 die each year due to opiate use disorders. And, and just to be able to subtract that figure is of great value for both us and the infrastructure. We have just taken the first step to go on commercial. We have one agree agreement signed, and we have a lot of uh, uh, contracts out in the market right now for review that we obviously hope will be signed here before year end. Um, we know that the US is big, so our core focus is to look at what we call islands of acceptance. And we use this market because we have done two clinical trials here, both at uh, Boston and New York, and we will initiate a new study with Cleveland Clinic in Ohio now uh, during the fall. So therefore, we utilize our network to secure the next, uh, next providers or healthcare providers that we will work with. In addition to that, we have an opportunistic approach. So as you can see, we have one partner here, which we have had a discussion with, a center agreement in Texas. And we do that because that is the first care distributor that we have found. So they work with a number of different hospitals, and, um, and that would be our good accelerator for us to, uh, to scale the business in the United States in a better way than what we can do than we can do on our own. So looking at the figures from this, when we look at forecast for 2025 and forward, we can see that due to the fact that we have such a small and limited company as of today, we are only five employees, but are able to scale this with roughly a handful more individuals, we can see that the the extension of the sales will scale exponentially throughout the years due to the fact that each health provider we onboard can then onboard several hundred or thousands of uh, patients in their turn. So we will be cash flow positive already in, uh, by the end of 2026 and then um, full year cash flow in 2027. And um, we will continue to focus our attention on the United States even though we see other markets as, as valuable. We feel that Sweden is lagging a bit behind in digital care. Um, so our main focus now is the United States, and then in a secondary way would be Germany and the DIGA portal uh, or their digital infrastructure. We are raising money right now, and um, I guess no, no, um, no, no, no challenging in understanding, but the main purpose here, the 55 and the 80%, they are solely to be used for the US launch to continue to push that launch and to be able to drive more, more sales personnel, more nurse practitioners, more personnel to aid in the reimbursement system to drive more healthcare providers and grow the sales. Then in addition to that, we use some of the proceeds to start to look at other verticals, where migraine being our second one, where we see that it's a huge market and we already now have healthcare providers that are interested in pursuing that path as well. So that's why we want to aim at that for, for the next step. So if you do, in fact, work with or invest with pain rain, what, what do you get? What is it what, what we stand for? Well, the first, it is the most prominent solution for chronic pain that there is. And it's also one that is FDA registered as a class one medical device, as well as being uh, CE approved as an MDR class one in the European Union. So it has all the regulatory constraints approved already. Um, the other part is that it, it is a uniquely backed solution with clinical evidence by itself. And since we are initiating a new trial now, we are evaluating further on as well, because we feel that we want to stand out from the rest of the digital space by having a lot of clinical trials on our belt. The second is that our AI network or our neural network show unprecedented data in terms of how to correlate activities towards pain. And just only after 20 days, we have a 97% correlation that is correct between an activity and the pain it responds to. 
The fourth is that our core focus is in the used market, where we see that it's large, it has a lot of uh, reimbursement system in place, and we see a good ability to scale there. And the second part is that the technical platform is already now set to scale that, that development. <laughs> so with that, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we'll have a quite general question yeah. to start with. Uh, which kind of pain, if any, is this uh, app most effective on? Um, it is to be seen as sort of disease agnostic, so it, it can work either, either if you have fibromyalgia or if you have arthritis. But uh, on the clinical trial, our main patient had either neck, neck or lower back pain, mm -hmm. neck, shoulder, lower back pain. Yeah, and so you can say that is also the most yeah, efficient. The, yeah, exactly. That, that's where we know that we are most efficient. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, which data do you provide to receive the thumbs up from uh, FDA? Uh, and also, which are your most interesting markets apart from the US? Um, well, I mean, uh, regarding the first question with FDA, we, we basically provided them how the infrastructure of our product looks like what type of input data we take from patient and how we then develop that through our neural network. So they, they got a, to see how the, the neural network is built up to do input parameters, hidden layer, and then provide output parameters. Uh, and then we also gave them all our, our studies to show how, how we did in fact, uh, how, how patients responded to that. Um, and that was it. I'm thinking um, this person might are looking for some tips. Do you have any actually on that? Uh, addition to this? Well, uh, medication, I mean, me, the FDA. I mean, best tips would be be transparent. Uh, I would say we, we were quite transparent. And I mean, we know that you get frustrated because it, they lag a lot in time. They have 90 days to respond. They don't respond in 90 days, but um, just take it as it is. Uh, and then for the European market, uh, yeah. I would say that France and Germany are the two main uh, interesting markets because they are quite digitally mature. Um, the reason for us not, not just saying that we want to move into, for example, France and, and Germany with product we have today, is that, uh, for example, in France, they want to have local clinical trials before going commercially with product. So, um, we, we're right now looking at into how we can do that. We were actually part of an accelerator called Prevent to Care, and they are run by, by Ramsey Santé, which is a, a French company. So we, our aim is to use that network to facilitate the study. Mm, except for the uh, US and Europe, how about the rest of the world? Any plans? We haven't looked commercially on, on growing in those markets more than that we have secured that we also want to have a product patented in uh, Korea, Japan and Australia. But we, we don't do any activities in those markets yet. Mm. Going back to uh, the US then, how are you building your own Salesforce there or partnership Salesforce? Yeah, so <laughs> since, we're, um, since we're a small company um, and all, all persons that have worked with the the U.S. system knows how much a sales director in the U.S. cost, both in fixed and, and, um, and bonus salary. So what we do actually is that we look for these, uh, as, the, um, as I presented in another slide, those partners that can distribute that also have their own healthcare providers. That is one way of doing it because they can work on commission. The other is that we, as of now, work with a Dutch company that has as their core goal to take European countries that want to um, sort of migrate to the US with their business and aid in sales activity at a fixed fee, uh, which work better than us. So, so therefore we can scale how much we want and we know exactly how much it costs. And so. Mm -hmm. so that's our target. Uh, our what data on patient compliance or actual daily use of the app have you seen so far? Um, so if, if we take two separate, first the clinical trial, we saw that from all the patients that onboarded, there is first a two-day gap. So you have patients that never start with it, and then you take those away after two days. And then when we look at population that stays beyond two days and then the 12 week, in the clinical trial, we had a compliance level of roughly 80. Um, now, if we look at the clinic we have live in, uh, in the US uh, and the patient he has onboarded, he is now running on a general level of low 70 figures right now. So depending on months, between 70 and 75 in compliance. And that's to be compliant in a billable way. 
So we look at how the code is structured to see how much compliance we need to have to get to be able to build. Thank you. I think we got to know a lot, and yeah. that is our time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.